If the shot in shotgun cartridges were cars, lead would be the old Land Rover Defender. Much loved, but apparently illegal. Steel is the Vauxhall Astra, gets you from A to B with some emotional damage. Bismuth is, yes, well, indefinably weird. And tungsten is the new NASA Mars rover, hard as nails but astronomically expensive. With five years to go before we meet the shooting organisation's ambitions to phase out both lead and single-use plastics, let's have a look at the various metals we can use to shoot birds. The future armoury, uh, as we can see it, um, doesn't leave us with many realistic options, unfortunately. We've got various grades of... Um, tungsten matrixes uh, with uh, polymers and all sorts in them, some harder than others, all very expensive, very expensive, and none of them totally satisfactory. Uh, you have bismuth, which is notionally fine because it's uh, it, it's softer, it, it, much softer than steel. It's more equivalent to lead, it can use without a, without a plastic wad. It's brittle. It has to have some pretty uh, clever work done to it to make decent shot out of it. We've had problems along the way. It's got better. Again, it's very expensive. It it will be because um, you know you just look on the periodic table. It's about um, it's about twice as common as gold. You know, <laughs> and uh, silver is considerably more of. It's only not as expensive as those things because there's not as many things you can do with it now. But the old supply and demand, which I think works pretty well through most of the products we ever come across. The obvious one, because it's cheap, available, relatively available, uh, and I have to qualify that because steel is becoming in shorter supply at the moment. They're having difficulty getting enough for the cartridge loaders that are doing it at the moment. And the problems in China and here and elsewhere increasingly, um, I guess supply of all these things is going to get harder and harder. Uh, but steel, in that it offers um, a cost-effective exercise, it's cheaper than lead in itself, um, but you do have to use some form of protective wad with it, a very good one. Uh, we've been using a plastic, of course, with high-density polyethylene, the HDBE, which you will, you'll see plenty of mention of, been serving us very well for a very long time. We know it works, but it stays around a long time. Ever since we had the drowning in plastic on the BBC, which you and all our shooting friends will recall, uh, the spotlight went on plastic. Now the question is, is it lead shot that's the biggest problem or plastic at, at one time? We're, we're hit with them both. Although they don't go into cartridges in a pure state, it's worth looking at densities. Steel is the lightest by volume. Then comes bismuth, followed by lead. Tungsten is nearly twice as dense as lead. What about supply? Most bismuth is produced from mines in China, Mexico and Bolivia, usually as a byproduct of mining other metals, including that great poisoner lead. Well, the result of that extremely unscientific experiment is that the lead compacted bismuth shattered. The hammer didn't make much impression on the steel and very little at all on the tungsten. And I certainly wouldn't like to drink this. Now I'm at home in Somerset. I don't have to go far to find myself a tungsten mine. This is where tungsten comes from. It's the fourth largest deposit in the world and it's on Dartmoor. Now tungsten is a hard metal. It melts at three and a half thousand degrees centigrade. That's ten times the melting point of lead. So what they do is they take the wolfram ore from here in the uh, Dartmoor rocks. They ship it to China where it's smelted at that temperature and it's shipped back to Europe to be turned into shotgun cartridges like this one. That's expensive. It's about two and a half times the cost of a bismuth cartridge, this little cartridge here, and it's 10 times the cost of a steel cartridge. Incidentally, this mine closed down a few years ago. Who knows, maybe the new demand for tungsten from shooting will reopen it. Now, tungsten has been used on Exmoor shoots Here's Haggis Hartman from West Country Guns to tell us how that went. They worked extremely well. In actual fact, a few of the guns actually preferred them over the lead, said they worked better. I suppose you've got smaller shot with the same, with a heavier density than the lead. 
And yeah, no, they were extremely pleased with them. Um, it was just obviously the cost factor. How much are they? Around about two pound seventy a bang. The fobs varios. That's a lot. Uh, are you going to have some in in, in the, before the end of the year? Yes, we shall keep keep a few in just for people to try over the coming seasons before everything does take place, which we hope doesn't take place. What about toxicity? Are bismuth or tungsten bad for people or wildlife like lead is? They don't crop up that uh, much in uh, the life of a toxicologist, I'm sure. I mean, like everything, there's, you know, everything is, you know, poisonous at the end of the day. It's just the dose that, 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 that's important. I'm sure that there are you know, unsafe doses of, of those substances. I couldn't tell you what they are. They've not had the attention that lead has. Uh, my guess is they're, they're much less toxic, but I wouldn't uh, want to say definitively. I know that there are studies looking at exposure to those, but they're quite specific examples. And we're looking really for environmental exposure rather than studies done in the laboratory. So that's quite a different, a different thing. Um, I don't think that there's as much known about it as yet, but there will be. <laughs> I, you're about to say more research needs to be done, don't you? As yeah, always. I, I knew that. That's that. amazing. The fact is we will probably end up using steel, like the Danes have since the 1990s for most of our shooting. Here's a shooting writer from Denmark to explain their experience. I shoot with, uh, with Wesley Richards from 1892 at Damascus Barrel. Very fine. I use it for clays, I use it for pheasants and for everything. And uh, then I have a hammer gun, uh, a Blanche hammer gun, which is probably 10 years older, I think. And uh, a friend of mine who is a gunsmith, he has a Padstone hammer gun. And it, I don't really think he knows the age of it, but uh, he uses it for everything. Uh, and that is maybe more than a thousand shots a year. And there's no problem. We never had any problems. I never had any problems with that. There's no uh, scratches in the barrels. I think bismuth is still uh, used some places, but uh, mainly it's steel now. There was a, a few places where some estates, estates uh, still wanted us to shoot bismuth because of, uh, of the wood, which was going to be for... for uh, for some kind of special treatment in the sawmills, but the sawmills didn't really care about it. They they said that uh, a small amount of steel shots is really not a problem. Uh, we had tungsten for for a period, but it uh, it was a short period. It was very expensive, and then there was some. Uh, oh, I quite remember there was something about. Uh, Tungsten, can, there was some uh, microplast in the, in the pellets, so actually I think it will be difficult to find the tungsten uh, cartridge today. What about those old guns? The head of shotguns at Browning has a simple rule for checking whether your gun can cope with steel shot. So it's pretty easy. Yes, we have a solution for any type of shot shells. Uh, basically, when you have a multi-choke barrels, from Invector to Invector DS, they are usable with steel. For the nominal bar with fixed choke, basically the barrels are not made to shoot steel, but we advise you to have a visit to your gun shop to see the thickness of the tubes and maybe there are some alternative to play some new type of chokes. And we all know different brands who offer that service in England. Nominal bar is the tightest bar you can get. And what's back bar? Back bar is slightly more open. That was mainly developed for steel. So basically that will help to reduce the recoil. And also because it's a little bit more open, that will make a better pattern when you shoot steel. And are most of your guns backbore? Most of our guns are backbore for the European market and for the US market. And for England, due to the fiber webs, we continued to propose some nominal bore, but it's basically only for you guys. I just would like to explain that we are lucky uh, at Browning because Probably the viewer don't know, but there's two norms. There's the CIP, and I'm sure you will explain deeply what it means, and the semi 
uh, specification, which are slightly different. They allow more pressure, they allow more speed of movement. And when we develop a shotgun under the Browning brand, we keep always the higher, the most complicated specification. So we are all, all semis on every type of platform. So we already have one step done if the legislation change in the near future. So it's like getting us a, a car that is safer than the safety standard. Yes. Back to the question of cartridges and the ammunition manufacturers have their work cut out if they want to meet the five-year deadline on the phase-out of both lead and single-use plastics such as steel shot cups. I, 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 I don't know uh, the full answer but we don't have a satisfactory cost-effective wad to use with steel which is why the steel shot cartridges that we're offered at the moment are relatively expensive for steel shot. You can get pigeon cartridges with HB the high density polyethylene uh, wads in for £155 a thousand, are cheaper than, cheaper than lead. Uh, but you cannot get them, you've got to put another hundred and more on just to get the same thing. Stay up to date with the debate at fchannel slash leadban.